Hello everyone, welcome to Bargain Gaming, where we can play excellent games without busting our wallets. Uh, this is a special episode regarding Nobunaga's, Nobunaga's ambition and how we create officers and what are the important parts on creating officers. So what we can do is go down to edit created officers. Even if we have not created any officers, this would still come out. So pressing X on this, and we will go into the creation officer page. And in the creation, create and change, so that's creation, and delete an officer, that's using the D-pad up and down, and active and standby. So in the active and standby, these are my created officers, I have created them. And then the game also provides you with a bunch of standby officers. If we do not want to create officers, we can use the standby officers that they have created for us. And and they these are also these uh, from Nene Yamamoto, Yamamoto all the way up are people I have are officers I have created. But from Koji Kashin all the way down, these are all provided pre-created officers. Some of these are pretty good officers and one of the best is this uh no no uh Yamamoto's yeah Yoshitsune Minamoto these are people that are popular in the past and this guy is also pretty good this Motonobu Sareda so there are some very good officers here that you can use as your followers or as your daimyo anyway so we are in the creation so we can turn this by pressing x on this like we can pick uh, Yamamoto or Serada so now they become active so once we start a new game like Yoshitsune Yamamoto okay assuming we have them active together with the officers at that I have created these are active officers right and so we we now have a bunch of officers that are active and bunch of officers that are on standby and so using the d-pad on the right on the d-pad and then we go to confirm so that means those active and standby officers their statuses are now confirmed meaning so if we go back to serada and minamoto they are now active officers okay pressing circle we get out of that one and then in the create officer the create officer the most important there are three important Anyway, let's just go through the creation of, of the officer. So let's say we create a new officer by pressing this one, new, we create, and we have, we're given a face or a portrait. Now we can pick whatever portrait we want. We can pick, say, this portrait, and that would be confirm that. So that is the new portrait. And then we can create a name. Say we can do Togo. Tojo, done, and then the first name is I Itag, Ita, Ita, Itakaga, so Itakaga Tojo would be the officer's name, and then going down to birth, we can pick a male or a female and then it has to match the port portrait of course and then we can have what kind of voice he has bold middle age zealous friendly and then we can name an officer this allows us to create multi-generational people and it makes sense to have multi-generational people and then uh we can put an officer here and so there are people here that they can be the the uh let's say he becomes the Jingyo, one of the created officers that we have and is active and they're active we have to have it make sure they are active and so he is the and then is he if if he is not the father then we can always say uh no uh delete that and we can now either make him a relative of Jingye, right 
we can pick that or any and then, and then we can go down on the d-pad down on the d-pad and we confirm and then we go to personality and then there are three types so let's just go neutral and then what are their ideals fame clan talent profit justice ambition i usually go with clan and then this is required royalty uh loyalty so that means if a person is loyal if they are five points if their loyalty is five points better than the minimum required loyalty so if we put eight for this guy for this person to be loyal to our daimyo or to the daimyo we pick the loyalty has to be 13 or better all the way up to 20. so we can put this lower so by click on this uh pressing x on this we pick this category and we can bring it down using a d-pad out or up so the lower lower loyalty point of required loyalty so that means he becomes loyal to us faster at 11 he's now loyal the problem with this is that captured if this officer were to be captured by so it would make sense just bring it all the way down to five right say okay down to to one and then sure so that, that guy's very loyal to us of course but the problem is what if he gets caught captured by another guy so he will become loyal to the new daimyo uh, very quickly so if we put it at five say six that's pretty good and then uh tier type officer s are very hard they're like very very this this determines their character so they do not change loyalty very quickly and then so they s is the best and then i think c is the worst so we can put him on as an s so that's their personality and then in tactics uh tactics this is one of the most important one and i prefer all most of the tactics like this one cunning fox wait wait oh let's go back to tactics cunning fox trick master so causes enemies in front to attack each other so if usually there are multiple parties when we're engaging the opponent they we have multiple parties on our side we have multiple officers the other side also have multiple officers the the most important part in this game if we want to specifically control in detail the movement of the battle itself uh it's always best when you can do a pincer movement against the enemy and so it's always good to send out when we deploy our armies it's usually better to have send it out with three maximum officers per army so that those three guys can split into three different groups or they can have uh, plus also the fact that each one has a different uh no no not three different groups, but uh it's always good to have three officers per army because each officer has this has each its particular ability like in this case like cutting fox the second officer can have like a trick master weakens the enemy so all of them can start using different uh stra strategies or tactics to delay the enemy to slow it down to cause them to have to fight among each other so this one i consider cunning fox pretty good very good i think the best and then trick master is pretty good weakened uh and then analytic strategy okay this also these are pretty good so i would usually bond breaker is the same as the cutting fox but i believe cutting fox is a little superior to bond breaker so let's pick cutting fox and then the lifespan of this uh this determines that at nuburanga's at 1534 at the lower part of no, birth of nuburanga's uh, scenario because we are given different scenarios to play and so and the uh daimyo division of japan is very different per per uh et, uh per scenario like the struggle of power battle of okay, hazama the and then uh, noburanga's besiege uh like a dream so very very different uh, scenarios where there are the factions will have be will be very different and as we go down to later years like to 1600 it becomes very hard because some of the big factions are so huge already so and it determines what 
age uh, our character will be. So if we only give him a 60 year lifespan, we can change this all the way to 110, I think. This is the max. So that even at Battle of Sekigahara, <laughs> this particular officer will still be effective and can carry out his, uh, can be an effective general. And then, so let's say uh, he is born in 1519. Uh, so he will be 16 years old. So 16 years old, that means he will be active even at the very first scenario, which is the birth of Nobunaga. So let's say we confirm that. And then uh, condition, uh, we will set his station uh, everywhere. That means where will he be born? So if we do not assign him as a retainer for our daimyo, uh, he will be the default. And if he's an active officer, he will spawn at Nijo Castle. Nijo Castle is the uh, castle of the emperor of Japan. And so, so it doesn't matter where he is. If we turn him into our a, a retainer for the daimyo we pick for our game, he will always be in that province that, or in that city that we created. But if we do not pick him as a retainer, he will spawn in Nijo Castle and become Become, will be considered a ronin and will be employed. Right now, he's considered a retainer. He can be employed by, uh, by in this case, uh, uh, he will be a retainer in a Nijo castle. So we can do this and set all so that at birth of Nobunaga, he will be set at Nijo castle. Nijo castle is somewhere here. Uh, I think this one. Yeah, Niju Castle. So which is already what we did. And then our settings, we can individually set it at different areas. Meaning for, for this particular scenario, he can be in one castle. For this scenario, he'll be in another castle. Anyway, so let's confirm this. Let's confirm this. Uh, circle to get out and then down on the D-pad to confirm this. And then... Be sure that there is a uh, click on R1, which is the right shoulder button, and we go to the abilities page. In the abilities page, this determines his leadership. We can, because we want him to be a warrior, let's say we put him at 90, right? And then uh, Val Valor also say at uh, 90. And then intelligence, we don't, assuming he wa we want him to be a powerful officer, we can put him 90. And politician is basically a warrior, maybe at 70, he's fine. And then next one, we go to moderate growth. This one is very important in character create on officer creation. Uh, qualities will be returned to defaults. Is that all right? Yes. What we want is these are moderate, uh, intelligent, so versatile. So there are different, this is like a growth rate of the character over the course of this character's uh, development so as he fight more so these are like he will have plus fives plus like as a min minister he will have plus five in leadership uh valor uh intelligence and uh, and intelligence uh over the course of his uh life now so there's a master so di they have different what I would love, what I normally love to do is I use Sinjin's profile. This, uh, this is really, they represent profiles of what kind of character the person or the character created officer is. So you have, you can have Kenshin's or Yoshimoto. These are all, or Nobunaga's or uh, Nobihide. These are all very strong characters and they will have different profiles. Dosen Saito. I thought, uh, where is Shinjin? Oh, Shinjin. I love Shinjin. So I usually put Shinjin. And when you have Shinjin, he automatically has these default traits, which he will acquire over time. So 
these settings determine the kind of traits he has. So if we press down which pick settings and press X, we go into the settings. So these are default rate, uh, default abilities that he will gain over the course of his life. So, so these are like hidden. And so I will make it active. So that means that's now pick. So those are his, uh, this Shinjin's uh, character traits, uh, field marshal, make it active. And each one has like, th some of them have different, uh, have uh, three categories to them. Meaning like uh, Shinjin is poor in sieging, or you can, you can tell him into, a, so if we pick this, so he has this Shinjin, the character profile Shinjin, has the ability for sieging. So uh, instead of just having this naturally regular siege, we can turn him into an assault master. So we cannot have both, just one. So they it becomes, so they can be, and another uh, very important item for a warrior would be logistics experts. So that could cons uh, he can, the warrior or the, his army can last longer in terms of uh, in terms of when they go to war and besiege a castle, uh, there will be a the 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 warrior the army will have, I think, an extra thirty days of provisions to get the job done. Because if they if the army runs out of provision, uh, then the army goes away. Meaning. Uh, the there's a lot of desertion and that's the end of the army so uh, either you have enough provisions which makes sense right uh, hungry soldiers are not gonna fight for you so uh, so we can so he has these are Shinjin's uh, default uh, abilities and if we want to make this officer our daimyo it's super important to have the charismatic uh, ability or oh, maybe not even, not the charisma, but the swindler mentality. The swindler trait is, oh, these are Sinjins, right? Uh, tactician, uh, schemer, there is a swindler, uh, reckless, or re desperation is better than reckless. Uh, swift and blitz, these are all default. Okay, oh, there is a swindler mentality. And that is super important for a daimyo. And we will swindle, subordinate loyalty goes up every month or as a castle lord. So that's why this is super important. And since we're making him into a strong character, he can be a castle lord even if we don't consider him as a daimyo. So those are personalities. And so on the top bar, we see under the traits, we have each person has can have 20 traits. So we still have so many, we still have like seven traits to fill up. And we can put this one, these are powerful. Uh, Western Titan, this is, this are, this are, I think are the same. Uh, attack power and defense go up, time to change are down. So these are very good traits. So he can have all 20 traits or uh, the more traits he has, the, the 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 stronger he is, and so the other ones are aside from logistics. Uh, we want uh, attack power and defense up greatly, ogre, and we want uh, not short tempered, but ability to administer, meaning civil defender, maximum popularity. These are all very good. Uh, and uh, I think earthworks, maybe. Uh, so you you can each have can have up to twenty. So let's just let's add just for the purpose of this, uh, we can just uh, add more to this guy in terms of uh, abilities. Uh, siege is a siege master, fortifier. We can do a first strike. And then one last one would be um, where uh, a cannon, so attack power upgrade on plains and mounts and mountains. 
and go back and do d-pad to the right and we can confirm so now this is this is a very powerful character and then uh, using the d-pad we can go down and click confirm and before we leave the settings it is important for uh for the daimyo to have the swindler and or or at least the charismatic because then officers loyalty goes up every month slightly slightly over time and this is most particularly important for captured samurai officers okay so we can go down and confirm and so we now then go all the way down and confirm the other thing that is very important is that uh let's use this character and look at her tact at her conditions her abilities she has one particular one that is uh, very important in that uh wait swift desperation charismatic emissary uh where is it swift i think genius uh no uh flood control earthwork charismatic golden touch diplomat emissary virtues Sometimes, see, virtue sometimes obtain treasures. So at least one of your characters should have, or one of your retainers should have this virtue. Because she will stumble through and find good items, treasures. And these treasures can be used to reward, to increase the loyalty of officers whose loyalties are low. So swindler is important for a daimyo and virtue for a for picking up treasures and then of course it's also very important that each officer should have a tactic the tactic is super important anyway so assuming we have this is all the character creation and also in the character creation we want to make sure they are all long lived meaning uh on the on the lifespan because we want them long lived and then okay so assuming we have done that and we can go out and say create we have created the offices we make sure we save it once they're saved then we can go out and say create a new game so the new game creation is a little bit uh, tricky say so we create a new game here we presented what scenario we want to pick so let's pick let's say the birth of nobunaga and okay so that means now we are asked to create do we want to play the the default here is see our where our cursor is see this is our cursor so our cursor goes down and this is this is nobunaga's nagoya hometown this is his father so that's why that's a default if we want to play it or we can go around and say we want to play this guy or we want to play uh saito or we want to pay the Imagawas over here, or the Hojos, or the Takedas, uh, or the Wisugis up here. So, or we want to create our own clan. So, uh, at the bottom right hand corner, you see triangle to create our own clan. So, let's pre press triangle and then uh, press new, press X on the new. It says, yes, we have out lower right hand corner says press square to create our daimyo to pick our daimyo press square so let's say let's pick uh li jing gun that's our daimyo and then press triangle to get the retainer so only the active officers that we have created are now available uh who is this guy <laughs> okay oh yeah we we created itakasa tojo remember and so and these are the two prepared officers that we just activated from so they are currently ronin so we have so we're carrying we're carrying itaka tojo that's the guy we just created and then let's go to confirm and now we need to have a crest with so r1 press shoulder right button and this would be our crest and then left l1 left shoulder button it will ask us to pick where we want a good place to start this when this when you're picking a site for your cities 
it's always good to be in the plain side. Although in the plain side will be, will we we will be exposed to a lot of heavy competition. I normally like to do it on the Kanto plane or here in the I think this is the the Nobunaga plane. Uh, in the mountains, uh, the terri the castles are usually very small, and the fields for development are very small. Not understandably because they are in the mountains and so all of these white spots are available spots for us to turn into a castle that we want so let's say let's put, put pick this place as our castle so this is where the our base will be okay pressing x we choose that so and then pressing uh X again, we confirm, right, that that is the one we want. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, okay, so now, okay, sorry. Uh, I, instead of that, I pressed, uh, okay, I, I should not press confirm. I should have come here and picked this one. See, using our, this is the tricky part. Instead of pressing, conf, uh, instead of pressing confirm, I should have used our toggle, our, uh, what do you call this? Cursor to highlight this one. Remember, we picked this one. This is our new daimyo. This is the daimyo we want to create. We want to play. We have created this this faction, this new clan. So, so by hovering our cursor over it, see the daimyo we pick comes out, Jingun Li, and then we press X on this. Now we go into the kind of difficulty they ask us to do. So there are easy, normal, hard, extreme, or edit one and two. So here it's up to you. I put everything on mid, so everything is normal. And the only thing I actually made change is that uh, the aggression level is mid. In this case here, aggression level is mid. And the AI level intelligence is at maximum. And then this is very important for me is that the province area of control by our own clan is unlimited. So our daimyo can control everything. If not, we will be forced to, we will have limited access to a province. Let's say a daimyo can only control like four or five cities. And then anything beyond a certain province, he has to uh, delegate. But I don't like to delegate. So I usually pick the unlimited. So these two, now, if we put, so this one just measures our own difficulty. So it's up to us how we want to do this. Or we can put uh, the uh, income on our clan is high and then others are low. That will make the game much easier. So anyway, so this is what I do. I put everything on mid and then except for uh, the AI level, intelligence level, which is high. And then our control is at unlimited and press confirm. And then here, the only change I find I need to do is the longevity of the lifespan of the officers. So historical, they die based on history. Longevity, they last, they live a bit longer than what historically is accurate. And ageless is they don't die. The reason I have longevity long is because in this, this age, uh, the samurais have a tendency to kill each other or kill their pris prisoners. And we are also given that choice of killing our prisoners. Once we catch officers who refuse to join our cause are still loyal to their existing daimyo. So we are given a chance to kill them off. So I don't want to do that because samurais are the most important resource in this game. So we can press confirm and press X again. And that's how the game starts. So we will be sent to our. Your orders. So this is so that is our that is our that is our city. So that's where we start. And then the key would be pressing options button. We can save this into let's say let's say uh, position one, and that's how the game starts. I hope uh, this has been helpful for you in terms of character creation and the tricky start of the game. Sometimes 
I, I, when I started this game, the tricky start of the game was, was not intuitively clear. Okay, uh, thank you guys for joining me. I hope.